This is an approach to a normal C-spine x-ray. The standard views used in the C-spine x-ray are the AP, lateral and open mouth views. There are also additional views such as the swimmer's view or the flying angel view. A minimum of three views are required, that is the AP, lateral and open mouth views, to ensure that no injuries are missed. We will start with an approach to the lateral view. Starting with the coverage, we have to make sure that all the vertebrae are visible, starting from the skull base to T1. If T1 is not visible, then you can repeat the x-ray or obtain additional views, such as the swimmer's view, which is an oblique image with humeral heads projecting away from the C-spine. Other views can be obtained by applying downward traction to the arms. If these multiple views do not show sufficient coverage, then a CT scan is indicated. Next, for prevertebral tissue and alignment, we will use the five-line assessment, which consists of four longitudinal lines and then the lines of convergence. The first line is the line of soft tissue. From C1 to C5, the soft tissue should be less than a half of the vertebral body width. From C6 and below, the soft tissue should be less than a full vertebral body width. We also need to look at the anterior line, which is formed by the anterior ligament, the posterior line, which represents posterior ligament, and the spinal lamina line, formed by the anterior edge of the spinous processes. A line should be drawn down each spinous process, which should converge posteriorly. If there is divergence, then we will suspect a disruption of the posterior column. We will now look at C1 and C2. The distance between the posterior aspect of the arch of C1 and the anterior aspect of the odontoid peg should be no more than 3 mm in adults. The ring at the base of C2 should remain unbroken anteriorly, posteriorly and superiorly. Next we will look at the bones, so we will trace the cortical outline of all the bones to check for any disruptions. Then we will look at the disc spaces. They should be all approximately equal in height at the anterior and posterior margins and equal at all levels. Um, the spaces should all be roughly symmetrical. Lastly, we will look around the edge of the image to check for any other visible structures such as the trachea, which is anterior to the soft tissue. In the AP view, we will use a similar approach and we use the AP to assess for rotation. If there is a sideways shift in the spinous processes, we can suspect unifacet dislocation with spine rotation. So once again, we start with the coverage. We make sure the whole C-spine and the upper thoracic spine is in the image. Then we will look at the alignment, and this is to see if the lateral edges are aligned. Again, we will follow the cortical outline of the bone to look for any disruptions. Fractures are more clearly visible in this view than in the lateral view. We will then look at the spacing. The pr spinous processes should be in a straight line and approximately spaced evenly. Then we will look at the soft tissue to check for surgical emphysema, which is a layer of air under the skin. And lastly, we will look around the edge of the image to check for injury to the upper ribs and to look at the lung apices for pneumothorax. Next, we will look at the open mouth view. The primary purpose of this view is to look at the lateral mass alignment of C1 and C2. So in general, we will look at the coverage, alignment and spacing. With the coverage, it is considered adequate if it shows the alignment of C1 and C2 processes. Now you'll check to see if the masses of C1 and C2 are aligned. If the lateral masses of C1 overhang the lateral masses of C2 by more than 7 mm, then there is a disruption of the transverse ligament and the fracture is unstable and requires fixation. Lastly, we will look at the spacing by checking the distance between the odontoid peg and the lateral masses. If there is rotation, the space between the odontoid peg and the lateral masses of C1 will not be visible. When looking at the swimmer's view, we will look at the coverage and alignment. For coverage, the cervicothoracic junction should be seen. Lastly, we will check the alignment by carefully matching the corners of each adjacent vertebral body anteriorly and posteriorly. Dynamic x-ray views are useful 
If the patient's initial x-rays are normal, but there is still clinical concern of instability. If the patient is fully awake, cooperative, and is able to perform flexion and extension of the neck, then flexion and extension views can be done. The patient should not be forced to do this. These views can show instability, which may not be visible on static views, but may not always be successful if the patient is in pain and has muscle spasm. To conclude, let's look at some abnormalities that you must be able to recognize on x-ray. First, we'll look at some fractures and then we'll look at dislocations. Jefferson fractures are unstable fractures. They are compression fractures of the C1 bony ring. 50% are associated with other C-spine injuries. 33% are associated with C2 fractures. It is not usually associated with spinal cord injury. The mechanism is an axial blow to the vertex of the head, for example a diving injury. X-ray features are best appreciated in the AP open mouth, which shows widening of the lateral masses of vertebra C1 beyond the margins of the body of vertebra C2. More than 2 mm of lateral displacement or unilateral displacement may imply a C1 fracture. Birth fractures are unstable fractures and they are fractures of C3 to C7 caused by compression. They may be trauma to the spinal cord due to displacement of posterior fragments. Hangman's fractures are unstable injuries but trauma to the spinal cord is rare. They are bilateral fractures through the pedicles of C2. They are generally the type of fractures seen after a hanging but also commonly result from motor vehicle collisions. The mechanism is hyperextension. Features on x-ray are pre-vertebral soft tissue swelling, avulsion of the anterior inferior corner of C2 associated with rupture of the anterior longitudinal ligament, anterior dislocation of the C2 vertebral body, and bilateral C2 pars interarticularis fractures. Three types of odontoid fractures which are best seen on lateral view. There may be an anterior tilt of the odontoid. Prevertebral soft tissue swelling may be the only sign of a fracture, and the fracture line may be better seen on CT. Type 1 is a fracture through the superior tip of the odontoid. Type 2 is a fracture through the base of the odontoid. Type 3 is a fracture through the base of the odontoid onto the body of the axis. Unilateral facet dislocation is an unstable dislocation. There is facet joint dislocation and rupture of the apophyseal joint ligaments. The mechanism is flexion and rotation occurring simultaneously. The radiographic features are best seen on lateral or oblique views. There is anterior dislocation of the affected vertebral body by less than half of the vertebral body AP diameter. That is approximately 25% of anterolisthesis. There is widening of the disc space and a bow tie or bat wing appearance of the overriding locked facets. Bilateral facet joint dislocation is an unstable dislocation. It is a complete anterior dislocation of the vertebral body. There is high risk of cord damage associated with this injury. The mechanism is extreme flexion of the head and neck and radiographic features are best seen on lateral view. There is a complete anterior dislocation of the affected vertebral body by half or more of the vertebral body AP diameter. There is disruption of the posterior ligament complex and the anterior longitudinal ligament. There is a bow tie or bat wing appearance of the locked facets.